Electrons are fermions, so they obey the Fermi Dirac statistics. And uh, the probability that an energy level E is occupied in an ideal electron gas at thermal equilibrium is given by uh, the Fermi Dirac distribution function, which is 1 over 1 plus E to the E minus mu divided by kT. So E is our energy, level energy, uh, and mu is the chemical potential. And on the other hand, 1 minus f of e gives us the probability that energy level e is empty. So as you can see, if e is less than mu, at t is equal to 0, we're going to have in the exponential an e to the minus infinity, which will give us uh, 0. So it will be the Fermi Dirac distribution function will give us a 1. For e greater than mu, at t is equal to 0, uh, the exponential will blow up, so we will have as zero. Um, the value of mu chemical potential at absolute zero is the Fermi level. At a finite temperature, uh, you can see that if you substitute E is equal to mu here, it's going to be E to the zero, so 1 over 1 plus 1 will give us 1 over 2. So when the uh, energy is equal to the chemical potential, the probability of occupancy will be equal to one half. So we can uh, see this result in this plot. Uh, Fermi Dirac distribution is a function of energy at t is equal to zero Kelvin. Uh, below the Fermi level it is one, above the Fermi level it is zero, and chemical potential is the Fermi level. And as temperature increases, uh, the one half level shifts a little bit, so we, we have a chemical potential which is different from the Fermi level and uh, basically we can see that there will be a tail forming uh, in the uh, higher energy portion. So this higher energy tail of the distribution when the energy level uh, is energy is much greater than the Fermi level or E minus EF is much greater than the thermal energy Boltzmann constant times temperature the uh, exponential term will dominate over 1, so we will have 1 over e to the e minus mu over kT, which will be e to the minus e minus mu over kT, so that gives us the Boltzmann distribution. Now also you can see that at a finite temperature, the energy an electron may absorb will be of the order of thermal energy kT. So thermal energy value is about 0.0259 electron volts at room temperature. And the Fermi energy is typically between 3 to 5 electron volts. So this uh, energy is rather low. So we will see that only those electrons close to the Fermi level uh, can get excited to the levels above the Fermi level. So you can see here uh, we have electrons uh, coming from uh, the, the levels below the Fermi level occupying levels above the Fermi level. So these electrons, uh, so electrons around the Fermi level will get redistributed uh, when they get excited uh, to states above the Fermi level. Now, we have an important concept that's the density of states. Uh, according to Pauli exclusion principle, each orbital can accommodate two electrons with opposite spins, that, so that's spin degeneracy. And the number of electrons per energy is called the density of states. So that is the definition of density of states. So it's going to be uh, the number of electrons dn dE, so the derivative of number of electrons with respect to E which will be twice the derivative of number of states, quantum states, with respect to energy E, because we have this number 2 here that is the uh, spin degeneracy. So this is our spin contribution. Now, going back to the Sommerfeld theory, uh, where we have free electrons uh, that are trapped in a quantum well, uh, the energy levels were given by h bar square pi square n square divided by 2 ml square. So um, the number of quantum states uh, change with energy as n is equal to square root 2 me l over pi h bar. So if you take the derivative of n with respect to e, we will find that l over pi h bar remains. We, we have uh, from square root 2 me 
uh, the square root will give us a factor of 1 half, 2me to the power minus 1 over 2, and the derivative of 2me with respect to e gives us 2m. The 2s will cancel, and we will find L over pi h bar, uh, 1 over square root 2me times m. Now, m uh, can be written as square root m square, so square root m square and square root m in the denominator will cancel, and we will have L over pi h bar square root m divided by 2e. So uh, this is d and de. Now for the density of states we have to multiply it by 2 due to spin degeneracy. So it's 2l over pi h bar uh, square root of m over 2e. So uh, that's the only difference between d and de and density of states. This is for a one-dimensional uh, electron gas and uh, we can basically uh, summarize this result by taking this 2 into square root as 4. So 4 divided by 2 will give us a 2 in the numerator in the, inside the square root. So L over pi h bar square root 2m over e. So we can see that the density of states varies with energy uh, with a, a variation of the order e to the minus 1 over 2. Now in three dimensions a uh, Schrodinger equation for a particle in a box has solutions of the form a e to the i k dot r. Instead of using the vanishing uh, wave function at the boundaries, we could we could also use periodic boundary conditions. Uh, so in in the crystal, the when you go through lattice translation vectors. Uh, when you have displacements of the order of lattice translation vectors, the wave function should be periodic, so we can use this. So psi of x plus l y z should be equal to psi of x y z. Uh, so we can use this to find that the k values should be quantized as 2 pi n divided by l. So with the periodic boundary conditions rather than those in which the phi vanishes of, at the boundaries, it's possible to get a simpler distribution of the momentum eigenfunctions. Now, uh, in the ground state of capital N free electrons, the occupied orbitals may be represented as points inside a sphere in k-space. So each of these points uh, will represent a combination of kx, ky, and kz that gives us a quantum state. Um, the highest energy level occupied by these electrons will be the Fermi level and it will have an energy h bar square kf square over 2m that is the kinetic energy and we have only one triplet kx ky kz per volume so because k values are discretized in units of 2 pi over l we have in a volume 2 pi cube over lx ly lz in k space one quantum state so we're considering uh, the possible uh, values of kx ky and kz in the k space and the minimum uh, unit of um, change from one uh, volume to another sub volume will be uh, in units of 2 pi cube over lx ly lz so what is the total number of electrons? So if we represent these quantum states uh, inside this Fermi sphere, so uh, this is the Fermi sphere of the free electron uh, gas, and it, which has a radius, the Fermi wave vector uh, Kf, the number of electrons will be the volume of the Fermi sphere, 4 thirds pi Kf cube, and if you divide this by 2 pi cube over lx ly lz, that will give us the total number of possible k values we can have. So it will also give us the total number of quantum states, but each quantum state can be occupied by two electrons, spin up and spin down, so we multiply it by 2. So we can calculate n here as uh, 8 pi kf cube v uh, divided by 3 times uh, 8 pi cube. Uh, and uh, so this 8 came from number 2 spin multiplied with 4 in the volume. So we have 8 pi kf cube. Volume V is Lx, Ly, Lz. So that's the volume of our uh, sample. Divided by uh, 3 times 2 cube. 2 cube is 8. So 3 times 8 pi cube. So pi, one of the pi's will cancel. 8's will cancel. So we will find the number of electrons to be the volume multiplied by kf cube Fermi wave vector divided by 3 pi 
square. So you can see that the Fermi wave vector magnitude Kf is 3n uh, number of electrons pi square over b. So n over b is uh, the electron number density. So that is uh, electron number density. So the number of electrons per volume. So these will be the number of conduction electrons per volume. Uh, 3 and pi square over v to the power one third and we can uh, go to the fermi level if we know kf uh, fermi energy is h bar square kf square over 2m so instead of the power one third here we will have two thirds for the fermi energy now the density of states in three dimensions then can be calculated uh, because we know uh, n as a function of energy d and de for any energy E, the number of electrons is changing with uh, energy uh, using uh, basically uh, 2me so you can see from here uh, if you have an energy E so how does the number of electrons change with energy E it will be h bar square over 2m 3 and uh, 3n pi square over v to the power 2 thirds and then from here you can see that 2me, uh, we take 2m to the left hand side, divided by h bar square to the power uh, 3 over 2 will give us uh, 3n pi squared over v. So then we can find n as a function of e as uh, v divided by 3 pi square multiplied by 2me over h bar square to the power 3 over 2. So that's what we find here. And if we take the derivative with respect to energy of this value, uh, two, uh, 2m divided by h bar squared to the power 3 over 2 remains. v over uh, 3 pi, uh, uh, v over 3 pi remains. And uh, we have uh, 3 over 2 uh, e to the power 1 half. So there's going to be uh, 2m over h bar square to the power 3 over 2 v divided by 3 pi uh, square so here um, this should be 3 pi square and uh, to the power 3 over 2 e to the power 1 half okay so you can see that the density of states in three dimensions is varying as e to the power 1 half if we have for the total number of electrons uh, capital n uh, where capital N was given in uh, in terms of the Fermi energy with this formula here, uh, we can see that the density of states in uh, three dimensions can be can also be written as three n divided by two e. So we substitute for n uh, this result. Um, so n is equal to v over three pi uh, square. Uh, 2me over h bar squared to the 3 half so we can substitute this result here so we will have 3n over 2e for the density of states in three dimensions uh, where n is energy dependent so we have e to the power one half as the functional dependence on energy so you can see that the density of states will increase with square root of energy so in one dimensions we find that the density of states is proportional to e to minus one half in three dimensions it's proportional to e to one half well uh, you can see the trend here in two dimensions if you do the calculation you will find that the density of states does not depend on energy okay so uh, once we know uh, the uh, momentum of the electron h bar k if you just divide it by m you will find the velocity of the electron so for the fermi velocity this will be h bar kf over m so for kf we can substitute uh, three number density pi squared to the power one third so we can uh, write this fermi velocity also as h bar over m uh, three number density pi square to the power one third so we can also calculate the fermi velocity of the electrons which is the velocity of the electrons at the fermi surface okay so as an example let's consider sodium uh, sodium is a bcc it has 11 electrons 
Uh, the lattice constant is 4.2 angstroms. So if you look at the electron distribution, 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s1. So that gives us 6, 2, 2, 10 plus 1. There is one valence electron. If we remove this electron, you will have a closed shell. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6 will be closed shell. Uh, because it's a body-centered cubic structure, it has uh, eight atoms at the corners, one eighth of each is inside the unit cell, plus one atom in the middle, so we have two atoms per cell. The electron concentration will be, because each atom contributes one valence electron, and there are two atoms per unit cell, two valence electrons per unit cell, two divided by the uh, volume of the unit cell, 4.2 angstrom cube, 3 times 10 to 22 conduction electrons per centimeter cube. The Fermi wave vector then we can calculate as 3 pi square number density of conduction electrons to the power 1 third. So 3 times 10, uh, we can approximate pi square uh, as 10 here. Um, to the power 1 third gives us 10 to 8 centimeter inverse, which is 1 angstrom inverse. The Fermi energy then is h bar square kf square over 2m, so you can explicitly see that this value will be 3.5 electron volts. So here we use Planck's constant, 6.63 10 to minus 34 joule seconds, and mass of an electron as 9.11 10 to minus 31 kilograms. And we can calculate its Fermi velocity from h bar kf over m, and it's about 10 to 8 centimeters per second. Now, one important uh, result about the density of states is that if you were to integrate the density of states from zero to the Fermi level, because this is d and dE, so remember, uh, density of states is equal to uh, d number of electrons dE, if you integrate this uh, with energy from zero to e phi, the EF, the maximum value of energy, you will get the total number of electrons at zero Kelvin. Uh, however, at a finite temperature, uh, why does this work? Because the Fermi Dirac distribution uh, will give us a value of 1 for E less than EF. On the other hand, at a finite temperature, the probability of occupancy of an energy level uh, with energy E is basically given by the Fermi Dirac distribution. So if you multiply the probability of occupancy of the energy level with the density of states uh, and integrate it from zero to infinity, all possible energy values, this should give us n. And basically, this type of calculation would give us the temperature dependence 